This is a 10 minute introduction to network meta-analysis. The plethora of treatment options gave rise to the need for comparative effectiveness research. Increasingly more systematic reviews focus on evaluating the relative efficacy and acceptability of many, if not all, available interventions for the same condition. Even within a class of interventions, there are many alternative options and they are not necessarily all equal. For example, Cipriani and colleagues found that mood stabilizers and antipsychotic drugs differ in their efficacy and acceptability when treating bipolar patients. Randomized controlled trials that compare all treatment options are usually not feasible, so other methodological approaches are needed. Cipriani and colleagues collected 68 randomized controlled trials involving over 16,000 bipolar patients to compare various pharmacological interventions used for treating acute mania. This collection of trials forms a network of evidence where nodes represent interventions and edges represent at least one direct comparison between interventions. Network meta-analysis is a natural extension of classical pairwise meta-analysis and can be used to compare all treatments that are connected to each other in a network. The technique has earned a crucial role in comparative effectiveness research, particularly in national organizations developing guidance for healthcare, such as the Institute for Quality and Efficiency in Healthcare, ICWIC, in Germany, or the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence in the UK. The method is based on the simultaneous synthesis of direct evidence, which comes from studies directly randomizing treatments of interest, and indirect evidence, which comes from studies comparing treatments of interest with a common comparator. The concept of indirect comparison is central to network meta-analysis. If two treatments, haloperidol and ketiapine, have both been compared with a common comparator, here placebo, in two different sets of trials, placebo versus haloperidol and placebo versus ketiapine, then the relative efficacy between haloperidol and ketiapine can be estimated indirectly via placebo. We basically perform a meta-analysis for each direct comparison versus placebo, and then we subtract the two estimates to get the indirect treatment effect. In a larger network of treatments, there is not necessarily only one indirect path from one intervention to another. In a full network, indirect evidence about haloperidol versus ketiapine can be obtained via multiple routes by combining the direct estimates that each path involves. Additionally, when direct evidence about haloperidol and ketiapine is available, it is possible to synthesize it with indirect evidence into a single powerful pooled estimate, which is termed network treatment effect. A network meta-analysis formalizes this process in a statistical model by combining results from all studies simultaneously. It enables us to obtain relative treatment effects for all pairs of interventions, even for those without direct evidence. It can also improve precision by reducing the width of the confidence intervals compared with those obtained from direct evidence alone. Note that when we estimate treatment effects, randomization is preserved. Nevertheless, indirect comparison and consequently network meta-analysis provide observational evidence because the treatments being compared have not been randomized across the individual trials. Before interpreting results, it is important to understand the structure of the evidence base and its characteristics. A graphical presentation of the evidence network provides an accessible and understandable format for describing the evidence. By plotting nodes and edges proportional to the amount of information they carry, the graphical presentation conveys how much evidence is available for its direct comparison and which contributes most. 
Colors in the edges can be used to convey additional information, such as the risk of bias in the included studies. In this network, information for comparisons in red and yellow comes primarily from studies at high or moderate risk of bias respectively, whereas comparisons that include studies at low risk of bias are presented in green. One of the challenges is how to present the complex set of outputs. It is useful to report estimates for all pairwise treatment comparisons with their corresponding uncertainty intervals, possibly for more than one outcome. Alongside the network meta-analysis estimates, the direct estimates can be presented to provide a complete and transparent picture of the available results. Most published articles use a league table like this one or a forest plot alike graph to report this information. A key strength of a network meta analysis is that it can lead to a single coherent ranking of treatments. Probabilities for each treatment taking each possible rank can be presented in a table or in a rankogram. It is important to look at such rankograms rather than the naive ranking or the probability for its treatment of being the best before drawing conclusions, because the latter might be misleading. Ranking measures and probabilities are straightforward to understand and a convenient way to present network results because clinicians usually want to know the preferential order of treatments that could be prescribed to an average patient. However, ranking measures should always be interpreted together with the effect sizes because a good rank does not necessarily imply a large or clinically important treatment effect. When setting up the research question for a comparative effectiveness review with network meta-analysis, investigators should make sure that treatments included in the network are jointly randomizable. That is, one can imagine a multi-arm randomized trial that involves all treatments intended to be compared. This should be explicitly stated in the protocol of the systematic review. The notion of jointly randomizable treatments is linked to the main assumption of transitivity underpinning the validity of indirect comparison. The assumption of transitivity implies that the different treatment comparisons put together in the network do not differ with respect to the distribution of variables that can modify the relative treatment effects. For example, a valid indirect comparison of haloperidol with ketiapine can be obtained if the two sets of studies, haloperidol versus placebo and ketiapine versus placebo, are similar in severity of illness at baseline, treatment dose or study quality. The transitivity can be viewed as the extension of clinical and methodological homogeneity across groups of studies that compare different treatments. The plausibility of the transitivity assumption requires judgments to be drawn about the comparability of the distributions of the effect modifiers across studies. However, effect modifiers are often underreported in studies, or there are too few studies available per comparison to enable reasonable judgment. So in practice, transitivity is often an untestable assumption. Consistency is the statistical manifestation of transitivity in the dataset and occurs when direct and various sources of indirect evidence are in agreement. Consequently, consistency can be evaluated only in closed loops of evidence. The distinction between transitivity and consistency is analogous to the distinction between clinical or methodological homogeneity and statistical homogeneity in standard pairwise meta-analysis. There are several statistical methods to evaluate whether a network is consistent and detect the hot spots of inconsistency. All methods, however, are characterized by low power and their performance depends on the amount 
of residual within comparison heterogeneity. Systematic reviews that employ network meta-analysis are becoming more popular as initial doubt about the method fades away and user-friendly software becomes available. Network meta-analysis successfully tackles the complexity of contemporary decision-making and has become the new norm for evidence synthesis.